In part one, we installed Scapy and we used Scapy to sniff traffic off the wire and capture packets. In this video, we're going to open packet capture files. We're going to open PCAPs or network traces that you may have as a network admin. Maybe you've uh, you've got some network traces or you've you've captured you've done some packet capture on your network, and then you want to examine those PCAP files. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So. For this video, if you want to follow along, what you're going to need is a PCAP to work with. So to get a PCAP, you'll probably need Wireshark. I'm using a Linux Mint virtual machine here. And if you want to install Wireshark, you'll run a sudo app-get install Wireshark. And if you run that command, it will go out and it will install Wireshark. You put in your password. And you can see I already have it, so it doesn't install. So I have Wireshark, so I'm good there. Now, since I have Wireshark, you're gonna need to, um, well, you're gonna want a packet capture. You're gonna need to save a packet capture. So what you might wanna do is open up a new tab here and run Wireshark. So you're gonna need to run it with admin privileges. So sudo Wireshark, and that will launch Wireshark. Put in your password and you're gonna to wanna to capture some traffic. So in this case, if I wanted to capture some traffic, what I would do is, is first of all, you have to pick your network interface. Mine is ENP0S3 here. So I'll double click on this network interface. It'll start a capture and then just generate some traffic. So there is my homepage and then maybe I'll go to ESPN.com here and notice it's generating some traffic here and I can see that traffic and it's being captured in Wireshark. So once you feel like you have enough packets, stop your capture. So I'll press the stop button and then save your PCAP, which is file, let's see here, save as, and I recommend saving it not as a PCAP NG file, but just as a PCAP file. So I'll save it as a regular PCAP file. I already have two versions here, example and example two. So I'll name this one example3.pcap, or example3, it's going to get saved as a pcap file, and I'm all good. Close Wireshark, and switch back to the other tab, and now what we want to do is we want to just run Scapy. Now you don't need to run Scapy with admin privileges if you're only going to be looking at a pcap that's a file that your user account owns. So I'm just going to run Scapy. And the first thing you want to do is you'll want to basically load that PCAP. To load the PCAP, create a variable like P and make it equal to, and then read PCAP function. So we're going to read the PCAP. And then we need to put a path to the PCAP file. So root home dan example.pcap or something like that. So there you go. So p equals read pcap function, and then the path to my pcap file, I'm using my example.pcap file, which is a pretty big packet capture. It's over 20 megabytes. So I'll run that command. I get a warning here, but that's okay. And uh, it should load in. It's gonna take a second here because it's a big packet capture file, and there it is. So now I've got that loaded what I can do is, is I can look inside of it. So I can start examining it and I can pick out individual packets or ethernet frames inside that packet capture to examine with Scapy. So I'll just put P here and hit return. And you can see that example PCAP has 12,800 TCP packets, uh, 907 UDP uh, packets, and then other 57. Okay, so it just kind of gives you a breakdown of what the the frames inside, what's inside the frames. And then another thing I can do is I can take a, I could use a length command on it. I'll put length and I'll put length of P. And it shows me that this, that P, which is our PCAP that's been loaded, has 13,813 frames in it, Ethernet frames or packets in it. Okay, if I want to examine an individual packet within this packet capture, I'll make a new variable, pkt, and I'll make it equal to p, and then in between brackets, I just put pick which 
which frame or which packet I want to examine. So let's say I want to examine packet 1000. I'll put 1000 in between the brackets. And now if I type PKT, it shows me what's inside that individual frame or that individual packet. And you can see here it's got the, the Ethernet or network access layer information. It's got the IP or internet layer information, the TCP or transport layer information inside this packet, and then some raw data here. Looks like some raw hex codes here. So, so there it is. The other thing that you could do with it is you could run a type command on it. I'm just running through a few commands here. Let's run a type command on it. It tells me that it is a uh, layer two ethernet frame. That's the type of packet that's in there. Um, I can run a dir and inside put pkt inside the parentheses. And then the dir shows me basically all of the user space variables that are in that packet. Okay, all of the user space variables that are in the packet. Aside from that, let me type clear here, clear the, the terminal. And let's take a look inside the packet. So that was um, a dir pkt command. So let's try this time, let's run an lsc command. lsc, open and close parentheses. And the lsc command shows you all of the higher level functions that you can use in Scapy. So in examining the, the packet capture or examining the packet, I can run these commands. Notice here's a, a fuzz command or a hex dump command. You can see here, if we look down, we'll see our the sniff function or the sniff command. So there's sniff. We can send packets, we can sniff packets. We can send and receive packets continuously. We can send and receive one packet. We can have it on a loop. Um, we can also run a trace route and all kinds of things. So those are the commands you'll want to learn how to use. Okay, I'll type clear again. So that was the LSC command. Let's run a hex dump on the packet. And basically everything I'm doing I learned from the interactive tutorial on the website. So um, if you just go to scapey.net you can learn all of these different, or there's a nice tutorial which teaches you how to do these moves. So hex dump, inside it shows me a hex dump of the individual packet. I can also do an ls command on the packet. And if I do an ls command, it shows me all of the fields, like basically in columns. So there's the layer two fields and information. And you can see here that it has like the actual what's in the field and then like a default. I think this is like a defaults. So, but this is the information in the field. So over here, you've got the source and destination IP addresses, and you can see them right here. And in, in an empty um, packet, this is what the defaults would be. Um, and then you can see here's the transport layer fields with the port numbers, source port. Notice it was a 443. So this, this packet's coming from an HTTPS server, uh, maybe back to me. Packet 1000 was coming from an HTTPS server and being returned to me. And once again, down here would be the application layer data, or in this case, a string field of raw data. Okay, what else can we do? So there's all the fields in that individual packet. And we can also run, a, let's, I'll type clear. And we can also run, we could say pkt dot summary and look at a summary of the packet, which gives me that basic breakdown, um, ethernet, IP, TCP, the IP addresses and port numbers. And then you can see here, um, this is like a push and an ACK. These are the TCP flags, and then just some raw data in there. And then I can do, let's say, pkt dot show, and we'll run a show function on there. And the show function gives me a nice kind of listing of the layers in the packet. Network access layer, whoops, network access layer, 
internet layer, it's an IP packet. At the transport layer, it's a TCP protocol. Um, at the internet layer, IP protocol. At the network access layer, it's an ethernet frame. And then the raw information here that is above the transport layer, this would be like in the application layer. Okay, and that's just a, a quick rundown of some of the things you can do in reading a packet. In the next video, we're gonna create and send packets using Scapy. And that's one of the more advanced functionalities because you can manipulate and craft your own packets. And you can um, you could craft them to send um, network attacks uh, for let's say penetration testing or um, network security testing on your network, um, all kinds of things.